Hey everybody, um, today we're going to work on Module 5, Lesson 3. Now, Module 5 is into fractions, so things could get a little tough, but if we work hard and we look back at our notes from class um, and we keep watching these videos, I know we'll all get through it together. So, just a couple of things to know. Today, we're going to talk about decomposing non-unit fractions and representing them as a whole number times a unit fraction using tape diagrams. So there's a couple of things in there that we need to understand. One of the words that we're going to see in our directions a lot is unit fraction. So when we see unit fraction, that means a fraction with a one on the top. So for example, one fourth is a unit fraction. So if we're working in fifths, it'd be one fifth. If we're working with tenths, it'd be one tenth. It's a unit fraction, one's on top. So that's unit fraction. The other word we're going to see in the directions is decompose or decomposition. So what we've learned in class that we can translate these directions when we see big words like this. Whenever we see decompose, we're going to think in our heads, break apart. So we're going to break apart a non-unit fraction. So this is a fraction without the one on top. We're gonna to break it down into smaller numbers that equal that fraction. And we're going to represent them using a whole number times that unit fraction with the one on top using tape diagrams. And those tape diagrams is a picture of a fraction, showing a fraction as an equal part. And so for example, if we have one fourth, I have a tape that split it into four equal pieces and one of those pieces is shaded in to show one fourth. So that is our tape diagram. So anytime our directions ask for a tape diagram, this is what we're drawing, okay? Um, so let's get started. So let's start with number one, by cubing our directions. We've been asked to decompose, there's that word, so that's what we have to do. We're going to decompose or break apart each fraction modeled by a tape diagram as a sum of unit fractions. We need to write the equivalent multiplication sentence and we will do this one together. So we have to break apart the fraction modeled by the tape diagram. So first of all, we have to figure out what is this tape diagram showing us? And this is, there's one, two, three, four equal parts. So that's our denominator. That's the number on the bottom. And three of those parts are shaded in, so that is our numerator. So I know that my fraction will have to be three-fourths. Um, and I have to do a sum. And a sum is when we add of unit fractions. And that's that fraction we talked about that has the one on top. So I need to make a addition sentence with these three, and the unit fraction with a one on top and fourth would be one fourth. So this box is equal to one fourth. This box is equal to one fourth, and this box is equal to one fourth. And if I add these three pieces together, they equal three fourths, and that is how we write a sum of unit fractions. Here are our unit fractions, and here is our sum, okay? So we did that part, we decomposed. But next, we need to also write the equivalent multiplication sentence. So we are starting with 3 fourths equals, and we need to use a whole number. So if my numerator is 3, that is my whole number. So three times my unit fraction, one fourth. Three times one fourth equals three fourths. Let's try the next one. First we start with cubes. Write the following fractions greater than one as the sum of two products. So my verb or what I have to do is write I have to write the following fractions greater than one as the sum of two products. Whoa, so there's a couple things in there. We have, 
two different things going on in our equations. We have to be adding together two products, which is the answer to multiplication. So I'm going to have two multiplication problems that I then have to add together that equal the tape diagram that's shown. So first, let's figure out what are they showing us. We see this bracket right here. This is a bracket and it's showing us that these boxes are equal to one whole. So the box that's left is extra. So I have one whole, which is one, two, three. So I know I'm working in thirds and I have one extra piece. So my mixed number would be one and one third and I'm going to write it as an improper fraction. So I have one, two, three, four thirds equals. Okay, so I need two products. The first product is going to come from this whole number. Okay, so I, that's my first step. And whenever we do steps in an equation, we use parentheses. So my first step is to get to that whole number one. I'm working in thirds. I'm gonna use my unit fraction, one third. So what times one third would equal three thirds or one whole and that would be the whole number three. Three times one is three and three thirds is one whole. So there's my first part. My second step or my second product will have to be the, this leftover piece. So I'm gonna do my second step, show my step with parentheses. I have one third there times a whole number. So one, one times what would equal one, and we know that would be a whole number one. One third times one equals one third. Now if I go back to my directions, I needed two products, which I have, but I also need to make it a sum. So if I go back, I need to put a plus sign in between these two steps so that I have a sum I've added. And then I was able to write the fractions greater than one as a sum of two products. Four thirds is equal to one times three thirds plus one times one third. Let's do one more. Draw a tape diagram and record the given fractions decomposition into unit fractions as a multiplication sentence. If I go through to find my verbs, I need to draw a tape diagram, record the given fractions decomposition or decompose, so I'm breaking it apart, into unit fractions as a multiplication sentence. Okay, so the first things first, one verb at a time, draw a tape diagram. So I have three fifths. My denominator or the bottom number is fifths, so I need to make it five equal parts, or as equal as I can get. And then there should be three boxes shaded in because that's the numerator or the top number. So, so far I have three fifths. I can check mark draw because I've done that. Then I need to record the given fraction's decomposition into unit fractions. Remember, unit fraction was when the one is on top. So if we're working in fifths, then the unit fraction would be one fifth. So I have one fifth, but I'm using this unit fraction as a multiplication sentence. So I have one fifth times something needs to equal three fifths. And remember, we're multiplying by a whole number today. That was our goal. So one times what equals three? One times three equals three.